With the prices of corn, wheat, and oats, oats soaring over the past six months, farm economy is certainly on a solid footing right now. With all the talk in Washington about drastic spending cuts, should ag subsidies, which total approximately $20 billion a year, be targeted? Joining us from his farm in Wilderado, Texas, David Clevenger. In Washington, Sally James, policy analyst at the Cato Institute. Sally, make yes. the case for uh, eliminating farm subsidies. These programs are regressive because the average uh, farm household income is higher than the average U.S. taxpayer uh, household income. They're costly, as you say, they cost us up to, you know, twenties of uh, billions of dollars a year. They are distortive. They flow overwhelmingly to just five what they call program crops, and most of those subsidies go to the biggest producers of those costs. They also have harmful flow-on effects to not only exporters abroad who suffer because of the lower world prices brought on by the overproduction, but also other U.S. exporters who would gain from, say, a successful conclusion to the Doha round, which is being held up partly, not, not solely, but partly because of the U.S. desire to hold on to these, to these programs. Mm -hmm. David, Sally thinks you got a Rolls Royce in your barn. Hi, Mark. Well, it's good to see you again. Last time it was a little uh, warmer when we talked. Yeah. Uh, you know, Sally, Sally has really the right to her opinion, but uh, this idea that uh, I think you need to talk about how much we have invested and comparing uh, farmers' income to the average household is rather uh, not comparing apples to apples. I doubt that many uh, 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 many households put everything they have, all of their savings, all of their equity up on the line every year, and that's what I'm going to do come April, come May. We're going to put everything we have and go back with another year to, to make a living, at trying to provide for the American people, trying to d just be out here doing my job. But don't, but don't the high costs uh, or the high prices you're getting for uh, agricultural commodities mean that you really don't need any help? Well, the way these farm programs are, are designed is when the prices are high, these farm payments are not made, and when prices are low, that's when they kick in. Now, in wheat, uh, we've we've been seeing a situation where uh, the target price for wheat is right at 392. Uh, the loan rate is like at 272. So we haven't seen any payments, countercyclical payments for wheat in the in the life of this farm bill. Mm -hmm. The farm bill has actually saved 30 billion dollars over the life of it. And I doubt that any agencies in the in the federal government can tout that kind of success rate. If all the agencies would be as successful as the agriculture program has been, we wouldn't have a de deficit, and we actually would have a surplus. A lot of this money that we saved was going to companies like Sally's that fund her Cato Institute, yeah. so that they could have a bailout. So uh, I'm really out here doing my job, trying to do the best I can. Sally, given the critical nature of farming in this country. I mean, we need them desperately to feed us. And given the uncertainties that they face every year in terms of weather, availability of credit to buy seed, fertilizer, equipment, et cetera, don't they, don't they need a safety net? Don't we as a society need to provide a safety net for the bad times? I would argue there's actually plenty of risky uh, businesses out there, and not all of them are asking for bailouts. Just to correct, uh, Mr. Well, I wouldn't Klinger, call this a bailout. That's that's. A... Okay. Well, just to correct, Mr. Clevenger, the Cato Institute does not need a bailout. We're not a corporation. We're a non-profit. And unlike his business, the people that support us at Cato do so voluntarily. The money is not taken from them as taxpayers by force. The other point I would make about your question, Mark, about the fact that we need food in this country, to me, that's an argument for getting rid of these programs. The fact they have a guaranteed market, everyone needs food, means that there is a, a as I said, guaranteed demand for their product. Uh, yes, pri uh, subsidies yeah, yeah. Are, are lower right now because right. prices are high. But if I'm these sorry, programs Sally. are, when these programs are on the books, when the prices fall again, we're all on okay. the hook. I I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but but uh, yeah, there's a guaranteed market for their product, but there's no guarantee that they're going to get the weather. For example, where David Farms, they have experienced seven years now of subpar rainfall. So. Yeah, I 
Oh, God. I, I, I understand that. I, I'm Australian. Believe me, I, I know what drought is and I know the effects that it can, that it can cause. But really, Australia has had terrible drought conditions uh, for, a, for a while now and yet our farmers don't receive subsidies. The best way to guarantee food supply in this country as anywhere else is to keep markets open. That way, food can flow from where it's plentiful to where it is scarce and that includes in times of yes bad weather what about that David I mean mark, so, yeah go ahead well mark I need to I need to explain something I think our viewers have to really understand who is funding Cato uh, they get on national television they go up and they they're funded by uh, multinational corporations some foreign countries they're funded by uh, big oil some cigarettes companies mm -hmm. and so you have to ask yourself who's funding Funding Sally, and and uh, let's take for example, uh, one of my biggest competitors is Australia, and we tout about they provide no subsidy to their farmers, but they were required to sell to the Australian Wheat Board, and when they sold to the Australian Wheat Board, there were huge transportation subsidies that undercut me in the world market where I couldn't sell wheat at a at the same price. We all talk about free trade, but we have to have fair trade. Uh, the Australian Wheat Board. Uh, it, for example, was unfortunately subsidizing Saddam Hussein, and they were they were found guilty of kickbacks, and I had to compete against that. So this is just one example right. of one reason why we have to have farm programs in the United States. Sally, I can produce against any 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 uh, producer in the world, but I cannot compete against foreign countries. I cannot okay. com compete against foreign treasuries. David, I'm sorry. We to, need farm I'm sorry. farm uh, uh, programs. David, I'm sorry to cut you off. We're out of time, but Sally, in fairness, I'm going to give you 15 seconds to respond. Thank you. We should not concentrate on who's funding who or who, where Cato gets its money, which, by the way, is a tiny percentage of corporate funding. We should be focusing on the real issue here, which is should the federal government in involve themselves in agriculture? The answer to that, in my opinion, is clearly no. That's okay. the real issue. Thank you both. David, Sally, thank you both very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, thank Mark. You.